Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's Wilson Seahawks going up against Jared Goff's Rams. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this <laughs> game, and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Russell Wilson, the Seattle Seahawks, taking the field. Wilson in the game last week against Tennessee, 373 yards, four touchdowns. Definitely his best game of the season so far. Yeah, statistically, he was amazing, and it was even more amazing they got away from so much pressure that Tennessee threw at him. I think they only sacked him one time. But it felt like there could have been 12 sacks. He's absolutely Houdini back there. But here's the thing with Seattle. They are a run-first team, and if they don't run it well, it's tough for them to win. When Russell Wilson throws the ball more than 39 times in a game, they are now 2-7 and seven in his career. Wow. And that includes this past Sunday against Tennessee. Now Wilson. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Aaron Donald in there to get him for a loss of five. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. First carry for Thomas Rawls. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Nothing there, no gain. And now they're looking at a third and 15. And we take a look at the offense for the Seahawks. In music, the Seattle sound is distinctive. In the NFL, it's the Seattle running game. Usually ranked in the top five in the NFL. It fell to number 25 in 2016. And they're trying to revamp the offensive line and find a bell cow running back in order to get things moving again. Third and long, it's Wilson. It's complete to lock it. Still shedding tackles. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. A good pick up there, a 22. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it <laughs> would, would have been, been a, different a story. long night. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And it's incomplete. It's a dangerous pass. That's what it was. And it brings up second down. The defense here for the Rams. Make no mistake about it. The L.A. Rams are loaded with talent on defense. And they're led by their front four, especially defensive tackle Aaron Donald and defensive end Robert Quinn. 
They finished number nine overall in total defense in 2016. And now they have a new head coach and new defensive staff. They figure if they're not in the top five, they've had a disappointing year. Second down, Rawls. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Go nickel here defensively on third. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Jared Goff leading out the Rams here, coming off a victory over the San Francisco 49ers, and he was really good in that game, Charles. Just under 300 yards, three touchdowns, and efficient 22 of 28. When you look back to last year to now and see the transformation of Jared Goff, and no, it's not complete. We know that. But you see the progress, and you see exactly why the Rams took him as the number one overall pick in the draft of 2016. Todd Gurley. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And the offensive starters here for Los Angeles. I think Los Angeles Rams will utilize 2017 as many do when playing the Madden game by hitting the reset button. They were last in the league in offense, last in league in scoring in 2016, but they'll build and move forward with a young quarterback, Jared Goff, and a top returning running back in Todd Gurley. Here's Goff now on second down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Goff finding fellow second year man Higby for a Rams first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're gonna give him that much space, He's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. On first down, it's Gurley. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We keep talking about the impact that hybrid players have had on the NFL, those guys who can do multiple things. I think Cam Chancellor fits that perfectly. Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? No, he's a football player. <laughs> and they love him in Seattle. He's been there ever since he came in the league in 2010. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. They'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Charles, this Seattle defense that we see, they were pretty good in weeks one and two, but last week you saw them in person against Tennessee. Not as hot. And actually, because it was hot. Because it was 117 <laughs> degrees when that game kicked off wow. in Nashville. And the Tennessee offense held the ball a lot during the game, and I think they wore them down a little bit. 
back-to-back -back weeks now for the Seattle Seahawks defense where they've given up a 100-yard rusher. Carlos Hyde of San Francisco two weeks ago. This past week, DeMarco Murray over 100 yards. That's not normal run defense for the Seattle Seahawks. Throwing on third. Gone. And some room to work. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Give him seven on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. It's Johnny Hecker now, an All-Pro three of the last four years on to punt. Back deep for the Seahawks, the All-Pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? on first down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it second and short. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They go read option with Wilson. Oh, he's got a little daylight. He finds an opening past the 40. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go play action here on first down. Complete. Richardson has it. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. That's a matchup. Maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, 
You know, he say, foul it away, lad. Foul it away, because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie, or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Yeah. First down, this is Rawls. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. Second down, Wilson. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of four on the play, and they're going to have a third down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Third down, Wilson. That is caught inside the five. And he's brought down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's Thomas Rawls who finishes it off with a touchdown run. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Rams get ready for their next series on offense. A uh, quick look back to last week. You had the 49ers and Rams. The big storyline was the head coaches combined age of 68 years old between those two. Yeah, and Sean McVay, the head coach of the Rams, is 31. 31. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan's the old guy among the two of them. I wonder if they both get stopped and asked for their credential when they get to the yeah. stadium. Do they know that they're the head coaches yet? <laughs> I think they're both off to really, really good starts with their teams. Try and start the drive with Gurley. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. On 
on second down. Here's Goff. He's going to get this one to the rookie, Cooper Cup. A pretty nice gain there on the run. Gets it to the 35 after showcasing the agile move. So it is third down now, but less than a yard to go. A shotgun snap for Gone. Man open, it's Cup. He's got it. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. The Rams dead last in the NFL last year on third down conversions, just 32%, but they come through there. They've got a much better chance of that number rising this year for a variety of factors. Of course, they're going to get their quarterback, Jared Goff, going. But the big part is, last season, they were really a one-trip pony on offense. Now they'll be much more varied under new head coach, Sean McVay. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Last year, Gurley, 74% of L.A.'s carries. That's the highest percentage in the league. But no real payoff because they finished 31st in the league in rushing. I think as a team, they ran for 78 yards per game. They had a 1,000-yard receiver and Kenny Britt out wide but they really didn't scare people downfield. And because of that, they stacked the line of scrimmage and stuck them. And Gurley here fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. He lets it fly for Lockett. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they make plays on the football, and sometimes you're there too soon. They come up in an offset eye. They'll try to run the rolls, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. At one point, the L.A. Rams defensive front four was made up of four first-round draft picks, but maybe the best of them all at that time, and still is Aaron Donald. Yeah, He's a force. Former Pitt Panther, and we were praising him a lot last year during our weekly commentary updates, weren't we? Yeah, strength, quickness, mobility, he has it all. Fourth in the Defensive Player of the Year voting in 2016. Before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. It's the Seahawks on top here early. We're back to Southern California right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. Come, come. 
Again, it's Rawls. And he will not be denied. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Thomas Rawls with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, it, if this is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. And it's good to make it 14 nothing. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Now a play fake here on first down. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and it's a second down. Play fake to Gurley. Now gone. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. The throw is gone. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Holding offense. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And we move our focus to Thomas Rawls. And he's found the end zone twice. And now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. First down, Wilson. 
And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. And now it's second down. Second and ten now, Wilson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Richardson. Fifteen yards through the air on a first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. They always say the real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Now Wilson throwing again. And he goes out right around the 39. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. And the Seahawks on third down. They've been okay two for three thus far. This will be third and six. To throw again is Wilson. And he finds Jimmy Graham. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Todd Gurley in the offense. They get set and trot back out there now. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit, maybe featuring other people, touching it for a while, and then you get a chance to come back to him when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. There's still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Every time we leave a Seattle game, I have the PA guy's voice in my head. Tackle by Bobby Wagner. <laughs> well, he had 167 tackles last year. Not only led the NFL, that was the most in a single season in Seahawks history. And how about this? His second All-Pro nomination. This guy is sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone, making plays. Again, they run with Gurley. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. He lost two there. And it's third down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Out of the gun, go on. 
pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Mike Bennett, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that, sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. And now running right through it. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways at the 22-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And a fumble last time, ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, the ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Alec Ogletree. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback, but as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. They were forced to punt last time. Now, I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Now on second down, this is Gurley. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. The Rams on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third down and 12. From the gun, here's Gone. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. This from 54 yards away. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And out now come the Seahawks. 
And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. They start on the ground with Rawls. Whoosh! And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Intercepted. Instead, second down. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. And on second and ten now. to throw again. Wilson. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. From the gun, it's Wilson. And able to find Graham, complete. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Thomas Rawls on his way to a monster game. Three first half touchdowns. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. And that's another route that defenders would vote to take out of the game. The wheel route? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver, as they zip out on the sideline, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, well, the defenders hate it there. It happened, and it resulted in a touchdown. Extra point try now for Walsh. And it is now 21 to nothing. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown.
Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And our attention shifts here to the Seahawks defense. And yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? Is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. When you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. To throw on second down is gone. And incomplete. He tried to leave it underneath. Nearly got picked. They may be lucky to have that one back. Third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. The Rams on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. There's gone. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. And yes, home is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. And probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining him on this stage. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. This is Brown. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down and about the length of the football. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? The offense on third down tonight, they've converted just two for six thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They keep it on the ground. Again, it's Brown. The 13 yards that time at a first. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks, too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. Play action with Gurley. Now Goff. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, 
Boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Here's gone. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So two missed field goals for him now. And that's helped keep them with a big zero on the scoreboard. Well, it's not the only reason they have a zero. The offense has been bogged down a few times now. But it's certainly not helping the cause any at all. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, That'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see he's looked pretty good to this point. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Second down, here's Wilson. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. First down, Seahawks, Wilson to Baldwin. At some point, the doubters have to just kind of back off with Doug Baldwin, don't they? I mean, we're talking about back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, had over 90 catches in 2016. He's going to play with a chip on his shoulder, but he's going to be productive. 2016, also his first Pro Bowl as well. and 10. It's Wilson. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. A big chunk of yardage there. 37 yards. to play here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a feeling those highlights will be pretty one-sided, too. Yeah, I think you're right, partner.
Now Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Doug Baldwin from four yards out. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. And that drive happened quickly, which is great because they scored the points, but then their defense has to come right back out on the field. It is exciting, isn't it, for the offense to do that? The defense is saying, okay, that's cool, but let's not make it a habit. We need to get some rest sometime. Walsh now for the PAT. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. Just a four-play drive that time. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle defense getting set to go. And they got off the hook just a little bit last time with that missed field goal. The way the game is played, what you're looking for on defense, are what we call empty possessions. No points scored whatsoever. That's the goal. At worst, you want to give up a field goal. That's when you feel like it's a win. But to run off the field with a missed field goal, no points on the board, and that's got to feel great going to the bench. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Golf. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Now let's see who this is on. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. First and ten, Goff. And he's got his receiver. That's Sammy Watkins. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Here's Goff now on second down. He'll hit Watkins on the crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A nice gain of 21 yards. as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. On 
the draw. Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll get it down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. The Rams on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and 11. Goff now to throw. Fighting to stay upright. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And this one is right down Broadway. And that drops a deficit from 28 to 25. Certainly their offense has sputtered here a little bit in the first half as they finally do get on the board, but they only have three. Well, at least it eases the frustration a bit, doesn't it? To be able to get some points on the board, feel a little bit better about themselves as they go into the locker room and try and regroup. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Tyler Lockett now with a return. Nifty move. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown, but those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of the season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. He'll be hoping to make it a three to one ratio here in the second quarter. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he finds some space, past the 25 to the 27. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. A tenth carry for Thomas Rawls. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. 
Okay, Brandon, thanks, and welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Rams have really struggled out of the gate here. The Seahawks took control of the game, and unless something drastic changes, it seems like they might be able to coast the victory. All right, let's roll those highlights. We go now late in the first. Rawls is going to get it on the auction pitch, and he counts off the seven-play drive with the score. As they get out to a 7-0 lead. Rams have it on second and five. Here we'll get a fumble on the run. Offense out now after the fumble. Rawls is going to take it up the middle. And he'll go for a score. That puts them on top by 14. First and 10. Wilson's got the completion here. And it's caught for the score. As they go up here at 21 nothing. Late in the second. Russell Wilson hooking up with Doug Baldwin. This goes for a touchdown. Seahawks is up now by 28. So that will bring our halftime report to an end. We'll send you back now to Brandon and Charles in L.A. to start the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But well, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. The third quarter starts with a run by Gurley. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. And while that play was unsuccessful to start the second half, I'm not sure that you just totally abandon what you do running the football. Maybe you make some adjustments in your run game and do things a little bit differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean you just go to the pass and do nothing else. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. Back to the workhorse today, it's Gurley. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Wasn't able to get anything, no gain. Fumbled once already. Maybe he's being a little careful. Not necessarily on that play, but I'm sure that's in his mind somewhere. Oh, without a doubt, because protecting the football is job one for anyone who's carrying it, and that's exactly what he tried to do on that play, but it didn't gain him any yardage. Throwing on third, gone. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Touchdown, Seahawks. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. Extra point try now for Walsh. 
And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And that last possession, really a gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive, then suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. You've just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. That's all you can do. here on first down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football second down following the incompletion Here's Gurley. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Pretty good running there, nine yards. Sets up a third and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. The Rams on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive linemen, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it here with Brown. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. The Rams on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 10. Gone. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Sheldon Richardson in there to get him. His second sack now in the afternoon. 
Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying <laughs> to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Now it's Lockett. Oh, and now he bowls him over. 12 yards on the return that time, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Try to get the running game going with Rawls. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down at the 32-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola, and then, of course, to Stanford, and, boy, he's been good. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle, complete. It's Baldwin. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play. That absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they're marching off another 15 against your squad. And now a first down following that long game. It's Rawls. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job. Hold him to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. From the shotgun, Wilson. Open man, it's Vanette. 
And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. Pretty heavy traffic over the middle on that one, and somehow he emerged with the football. Way to possess it, despite all the extra contact and people around him. Touchdown Seahawks. Thomas Rawls, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks are running away with this one. And let's not forget he had the receiving touchdown earlier. Now a trio of rushing touchdowns. Quite a performance. Diversification, that's all you can talk about. His ability to do everything leaves him on the field on every down on offense because you can hand it to him as we've seen. Would you say three rushing touchdowns? And of course, throw it to him where he's caught one as well. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. That time, a six play drive. And it's Thomas Rawls who finishes it off with a touchdown run. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. First down, it's gone. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Second down now after the incompletion. Gone. Over the middle, that's held in by Cup. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. When I watched Jared Goff on tape at Cal, I saw a guy who wasn't just a dart thrower. You know, a lot of people said, ah, oh, he's perfect for the West Coast offense. I always thought he could do a little bit more. And that was the reason why. He can push it downfield. He has a good, strong arm. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now it's Gurley. Good move by Gurley. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And a short gain down to about the 33. Give him three on the play, and that'll make it third down. Oh 
And they're just a couple of yards shy of a first down here on third down. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. Ball start offense. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Back to throw. Golf. They'll set up the screen with Davis. And he will have a first down at about the 21 yard line. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. been a tough one for this offensive line it appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game the way they've been pushed around six sacks given up in this one Inside the 20 at the 19. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and they're going to face a third down. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back, and now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. From the gun, here's gone. And that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Zerline's kick is good. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, I guess we're at the stage here where they wouldn't say no to any points, but I don't think field goals are what they're looking for here in the second half. I don't either, Brandon. When you're down as much as they are, that's the sign of a head coach waving the white flag to me. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time out, another touchdown. I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this was just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? You and me trying to get to the airport. That's the roads true. would be fairly that, clear that by the time positive. we have to leave the booth. Will 
Wilson again to Rawls. And a loose football. Rawls loses it. But I believe a Seahawk was able to get a handle on this, so this will remain Seattle ball. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. So the offense avoids disaster, keeps possession. Now it's second down. Rawls. And he's got Rome. There goes Thomas Rawls. He's at the 30, 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Thomas Rawls, 81 yards. And the Seahawks offense continues to pour it on. And that rushing touchdown, his fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it, but he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. Walsh now for the PAT. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. to Gurley. Now gone. Looking deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Shotgun snap for gone. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Well, they get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. Here's Gaul. 
this is going to be incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Returnable for Lockett. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. Thomas Rawls getting ready to go here on offense. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. <laughs> that's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. The busy afternoon continues for Rawls. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. To throw is Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A Seahawk first down. Wilson to his big target, Graham. Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season, but what a bounce back in 2016. How did he not get any votes for comeback player of the year? I was just going to ask you that. Not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving, but 65 catches, 923 yards. That was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history. And I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017. down this is Rawls and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line that'll set him back with a loss of three on the play and that'll make this a second and 13. Brandon it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter they're gonna have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball made it very difficult right there now they need to repeat that effort yeah bring seven eight nine whatever it's gonna take to slow them down Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. They go again with Rawls. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. And it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. And the Seahawks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and seven. Now Wilson. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Rams have got it back. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Following the fumble recovery, golf. Looking left side for Watkins, and he's got him. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 
15 yards down to the 15 and a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. And the offense lining up first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Another carry now for Gurley. Good move by Gurley. And Gurley fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. That's a whole lot of points still to be down. But congratulations. They're still fighting, and they scored another touchdown. My old high school coach used to say, Charles, he said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes you wish you never had showed up. <laughs> Could have saved the gas money, the hotel, <laughs> what have you, huh? Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. And they make the score a little bit more respectable here in our final quarter of play. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it's finished off by a Todd Gurley touchdown run. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Tyler Lockett was the target there. Third down here. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. From the gun, it's Wilson. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Robert Quinn in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack.
Here's John Ryan now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now Austin. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and ten. And our attention shifts to Todd Gurley. He is fully awake now. If he didn't get off to the start that he normally does, they've got his attention. He's running it well. You think they set off the alarm clock at the half? <laughs> I think that's what went down? I know this, having played on the defensive side of the ball, if you do a really good job against a great runner, and you go into the half, you're excited, you're fired up, you think the game plan is working, but in the back of your head is that little bit of nagging doubt. Can we do this for four quarters? So far, that's not happening. Now golf on first down. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Michael Bannon in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On second down, here's Goff. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. It's a seven-yard run, but it does bring up fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 15. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field. So it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. On second down, Wilson got his man complete over the middle. That's Baldwin. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. 
So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. a delay of game there they could not get the playoff in time frustrating for the head coach frustrating for the offense sometimes you have to get the play call in a little bit quicker beyond the 40. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game. The effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage. I really liked what he did there. And the Seahawks on third down. They're at 50 percent. Four for eight. This will be third and six. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. Wow open receiver complete and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41 to give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down following the run. This is Rawls. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He's got Lockett, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and 10. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here's Rawls. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Gets a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Six yards to go here on second down. A running 
running play for Rawls. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? The Seahawks on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. Here it's third and three. They run with a power back, Rawls. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And they won't run a play here. No victory formation. They will indeed try to get three more. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon God. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.